for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto with director Simon Ennis. What inspired you to initially get into the film business? Uh, into the film business? Uh, well, I guess I, I was always, uh, I always sort of wanted to get into film. My, uh, my parents kind of um, uh, worked in film. Uh, my mother was a distributor and then a, uh, a sort of executive producer. She's kind of more in the film financing side. And my dad was a uh, film critic and a programmer, especially for the, a lot of the, the rep theaters uh, in Toronto. When I was born, they, uh, they actually owned the Review Cinema and Roncesvalles together. So there, there are pictures of me as a baby, uh, uh, like, you know, behind the can candy bar and stuff like that. Oh, awesome. And you recently finished your film, Lunar Sea, which screened at TIFF and is yeah. going to be at South by Southwest soon. What inspired your initial fascination with the moon? Uh, well, I guess I didn't really have a particular fascination with the moon or space, like from you know growing up or anything like that. But um, about two or three years ago, uh, I was uh, I I kind of came across um, a couple of articles in the course of a week that didn't really have much to do with each other, except that they had something to do with the moon. The first one was uh, about one of the characters who's in the in the film, uh, named Dennis Hope, who's a guy who lives in Northern California who 30 years ago uh, claimed ownership to the moon and all of the other planets in the solar system uh, with the United Nations. He found a loophole in uh, international uh, uh, space law in a UN treaty uh, that, uh, that prohibited any nations from claiming anything in outer space, but nothing about private individuals. So he filed a claim with the UN, and he owns the moon, and he's made over $30 million selling one-acre moon lots uh, since about 1980. Uh, so I, I read about that and thought, like, that was an incredible story. It's one of the best ideas I've ever uh, heard. <laughs> and then within about the same week, I also read some article about, you know, how the moon was seen in ancient religions, and then another article that was kind of more science-based about um, a, uh, an, a, uh, uh, a thing in moon dust called helium-3 that a lot of scientists feel uh, they can work out a, a process called nuclear fusion. Um, they can use this helium uh, three to basically solve all of our energy needs on Earth, and it's a totally like it would be a totally green burning fuel and everything like that. So I basically I read like you know one kind of wacky article, one very scientific article, and then one article that had more to do with like science and religion, and it just got me thinking about all of the different ways that we see the moon, and I thought that it was kind of a nice symbol um, to to be able to use to kind of explore themes of kind of passion and and creativity and obsession and kind of all, all stuff like that. So then I, I ended up uh, going and tracking down um, uh, various moon stories. And in doing so, I found the subjects for the what ultimately became the documentary. And how did shooting the project go? Oh, well, I mean, it, it went great. We made a movie and yeah. it seems to be doing well. So um, it was uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I've never made a documentary before. Most of the stuff that I do is all, you know, scripts and actors and everything. Uh, so this was this was uh, different and really fun because I would, you know, go somewhere on a trip to California to see Dennis or to Texas. We spent spent a lot of time in Texas shooting or New York or Milwaukee or Reno. Um, I'd go for, you know, three to five days or maybe a week um, and then come back and have all this footage that I'd shot and work with my editor um, for, you know, weeks or months and just kind of slowly we built up this film. So it was a, it was a lot of fun because I think... Um, I think I went on probably eight or nine different uh, different trips to shoot, and we it was over the course of a, of about a year, and we were editing all the way through there. So it was a it was a much different way of making a movie, but it was it was a lot more uh, it was a, it, it was a lot more kind of like you know organic discovery and and a lot more uh, kind of an improvised way of doing something that I'm used to. Absolutely, and how do you get your answers out of people when you're working with the subjects? as a director, how do you approach that and make people comfortable? Um, well, uh, I mean, I don't really have much of a background in interviewing, but w what I did is, uh, you know, I just, um, I think that the trick is for me is I would do quite long interviews and I would try and speak as little as possible mm -hmm. uh, and just let people say what was kind of on their mind um, and only kind of speak whenever I kind of needed to provoke them to sort of keep going um, because you know we're we're filming on on you know onto onto cards you know we're not working on film or even on tape so it's like it's really cheap to just keep going and uh, I find that the if, I, I I found pretty fast that if you went into an in interview with a uh, with you know a really predetermined idea about the answers that you wanted they wouldn't be that interesting whereas if you 
just kind of get people going into whatever they're the most excited about. Uh, it kind of opens up a window into their thought process and you can get the most interesting stuff. And you've also worked with Josh Peace on all of your projects. He was yeah. a hand in your documentary. <laughs> um, how do you know him, and will you be working together again in the future? Um, well, I, uh, how do I know him? Uh, we uh, started coming into this video store that I worked at when I was in film school about 10 years ago. Um, and uh, he started renting there, and then he started, for some reason, and it was kind of nuts because he was like a working successful actor, but he started working there one day a week, I think, just because he like wanted to as a, as a hobby, or maybe it was cheap and he wanted free rentals. And uh, uh, I don't know, we just beca we became friends and started making short films together, and then we made a feature film together. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll work together again. Um, the only reason he wasn't a part of this movie, other than, other than a little bit of hand modeling, when I needed an insert of one of the main characters putting a, a cassette tape into their, uh, into their car stereo, uh, is just because it was a documentary. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I was drinking with him last night. Oh, yeah, cool. we, were, we, were, we were vaguely talking about ideas. Yeah. And what's next for you? Do you think you'll do another documentary or go back to the more traditional type of storytelling? Um, well, uh, it's, I guess it's whatever, whatever I can get money for next. Uh, I got a couple scripts that I'm working on uh, that are in development, and that's, so I kind of assume maybe one of those will be next. Uh, but I'm looking for another documentary idea. I, I kind of honestly never thought I was going to make one, but um, a few years ago, I, uh, uh, right before my first feature, I was editing a movie uh, for a documentary filmmaker named Ron Mann, who became our executive producer. And working with him on a documentary, it got me kind of interested in doing it. And I had such a blast doing this one. I'm, I'm definitely going to look for another, uh, another idea. And where is the best place to find out more information on you and your projects online? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, um, what is the best place? Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I guess uh, uh, Google, maybe. I don't have. I don't IMDb. Have a, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I don't have a. Uh, I don't have a, a website. I should probably get on that. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Congratulations on all of your success, and best of luck with your upcoming projects. And have fun at South by Southwest. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Katie Ullman, reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto.